I just, I just really enjoy it. It's really, really good. So this is Dave from Mules, and he rides this home at night. So I, I have now got to go on it. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Um, so your key just goes in there. Yeah. So don't go so like, like the, This is like the there. old school sort yeah. of uh, yeah, really bikes what they were in the earlier days. There's no fancy gadgets on it. You don't put your phone through it. it there's no rider mods. It's just, it's just pure enjoyment. It is really, really good. It's a nice seat tight. I've got really short legs and manage it no problem. Um, your clocks, you've got everything that you need. Fuel gauge, um, gear indicator, clock. It's just, Thank it's you. just brilliant. To change, if if you want to go through different things, you've got like. Uh, trip A, Trip B, genuine MPG from me riding it. Please keep it at them sorts of uh, MPGs. <laughs> Don't want it coming back doing three to the gallon. <laughs> so that is genuinely what it's been doing. That's on a mixture of different roads, um, 80.3 miles to the gallon. So, what's the uh, what's the road license on these? Like 70 quid a year, is it? I'll check that. Check yeah, I'll check that. But it's a pretty bike as well, isn't it? Is. We've put well the built. Number board on the side. We've put the little um, screen on the front, right? Yeah. So these the are the add-on accessories. You can, for them. you can get a little pannier that goes on the side. I just really enjoy riding it. So LED lights, LED indicators. Yeah. yeah. We've put the the wheel stripes on it as well. Um, oh yeah, that's smart, isn't it? Everything is is what you'll be used to. A very very nice bike clutch ridiculously light and um, it's just so easy to use uh, you've got dip beam and main beam pass light on the back there horn indicators just here uh, hazard warning lights uh, your start button and this is it switch. the size of them controls as well are what you need because yeah, you, yeah. a lot of bikes now they're getting too small aren't they yeah they're getting you know when you've got your gloves on as well with your gloves on with them that yeah. makes a difference I, I just find it just loads of fun to ride it's not you don't feel like you've got to go everywhere at 150 miles an hour. I need it because of the miles that I do. I need good MPG. I want something that's comfortable. I just think it's fantastic. I Brilliant. Think it's a really, really good bike. Right, let's start up and let's get it going, yeah. Dave. And it's, and Thank it's you. Got a, with a standard exhaust, it's got a really, really nice sound to it. Well, that sounds good, people, doesn't it? <laughs> that does sound good. Right, we'll get out and we'll see what she's like. Thank That's you very fun. much. See you later, Paul. Much appreciated. All right. All right, so a quick walk around the uh, CL500. I know there's been a lot of reviews on this, but this by looks of it, as uh, someone starting out and wants a manual, it's going to remind me very much of the, uh, the old CB F500 that I used to have, which was still fabulous. So. Let's get my helmet on and let's get going. And we're now... See! People who watch my channel and I go about my NC and my DCT, I can ride a manual bike, believe it or not. So, you know, don't say that against me. So, that clutch is, like Dave said, really light. Now, why is that? No, the stand weren't up properly. So... Right, let's go. Oh! And the bite on it is about a quarter where you think it's starting off being hit by a bmw that's a good start so we're gonna go i don't know where we're gonna go front brake is that's that's really good and i'll tell you what it's smooth Oh, people. And I'll tell you what, it's got a, it's got a bit of beef behind it as well. It just uh, didn't zip up my things properly. Can be a bit jerky. Changing gear without the clutch. There we go. So you can even change it without touching the clutch. Unlike anything, going down you can just let your heads off, let it drop down. So if you don't want to use a clutch and you do it carefully, you get the revs right. They're working hard today. 
And what we'll do, we'll go straight up through Presswich. You've been with me before on this. Uh, great pegs on it, but they get they do get a little bit when you put your feet down. You know, either way. Not, a, not that bad a thing. You can just see there. You can only, either way, they do stick out a bit. I can't believe how, uh, how smooth she is. And the, the dash on it is fabulous. Do you know, Summer, I go on about my NC, but if the NC had that sort, that sort of texture on its dash, that's nicer. It's really nice, that dark with the light greyish white digits that show and I'll tell you what it's going over these bumps well and this got this has got a twin shock on the back uh, this has got a twin, twin shock on the back of it uh, so it's not mono shock seat like anything a bit hard because it's new Gear indicator there, six gears, and even in six at 30, got a bit of a judder at six in 30. Probably at around about the 30, you're probably better off sticking in about fifth. What a lovely bike to ride. And they, you know, this is it, people. I could commute on this, this would be fabulous for commuting on. Even though I love my NC, this is lighter. This is just, it's like being a kid again. For the first five minutes on this now, love it. I wouldn't be ashamed to have this in me, in me garage at all. And these sort of bikes, for complete new beginners, for people who've just passed the test, and I think this is A2 compliant as well, this. This would be a superb bike for you. Brakes are brilliant. Back brake a bit, a uh, little bit spongy on the back brake. Where's the sunshine gone, people? So we're going to give it a bit of a ride on the motorway. I think we'll we'll head down the lanes of uh, culture. We'll go down some decent lanes again, because I reckon this bike as well. Put a set of knobblies on this. Be fabulous. Now, in terms of uh, comparisons, you probably. At the Triumph 400 and them sort of bikes now, aren't you? That are on the same sort of, of line that are going for this. The thing you're always going to have with a Honda, you're always going to have reliability. Because they're just not unreliable. They are reliable bikes. A lot of bikes are. But I think they just excel. You can see now, we're in quite heavy traffic. And it is a really, really good bike for filtering it's got enough pull if you want to really get past well impressed with this people absolutely well impressed with it And the brakes are really good. Really impressed with the brakes. So let's see what she's like. Get into neutral dead easy. Let's just try her again. Neutral. So easy to get into neutral. Like they say, really easy uh, switch gear on it. High low, horn, indicators, flasher, kill switch, hazards. It's even got a set of hazards on this, which is great. 
because it's like a bit like the older bikes when I was younger what they had but they didn't have hazard lights in them days or very few of them did I'm just surprised how quiet it is and how there it's just totally going around corners she handles well she don't half handle well. Wow. Yeah. Right. So we're on the uh, M60 motorway. Mirrors are quite good on it as well. So we're in now six gate. We got to 50. It started to get a little bit buzzy at 60. It's a bit, to be honest, like uh, the original CB500X that I rode. It's, uh, it's the same engine. And I'm quite surprised because we're quite windy out here today now. And I'm not being pulled about. And it's such a light bike. It is really, really a nice bike to ride. As I say, as we're getting now, as we're moving up to the 50s, the 60s, we're getting vibration through the foot pegs. We're getting a bit of tingling through the seats. We're getting it through the handlebars. So you're getting quite a lot of buzzing through the handlebars at six there. But she's still even now, she's got loads left in her. She's not got that stomp that you would have on your sports bikes. Like now as you're building up, we're going up quite a steep hill. Just a quick one, as you build up speed, you do get an awful lot of uh, wind against your chest and it goes against your chest and you uh, the bottom of my helmet as I say I'm 5'10 so I think for when you start building up to 70 and that sort of speed on the motorway you are being pushed a lot by wind uh, can do it, it's like anything, it can do it really easy, no problem at all. Uh, but I think it's it's nice spot on the motorways is 60, 65. You're in a calm. As soon as you start putting on the throttle and putting more, you're getting a lot of wind blast against you, which you're gonna have, it's a naked, you know, I'm not slating it for that. It is a, there's nothing here to protect us. Even though this little screen's on there, it's not really protecting us at all. I think if it had like the old CBF 500 where it had a little cowling that come out and round and could divert it, it'd probably help a little bit. But I can't see you hammering this bike, you know, down the motorways at 80 mile an hour. And it will do it, as I say. It just becomes uh, a little bit gusty against your chest and the bottom of your chin on your helmet. That is, you know, on an honest opinion down a, a major motorway, when you're 60, 65, you're going to be comfortable. 70, 75, you're going to start having a bit of wind against you where you go. But it's fabulous. It's absolutely still fabulous and it's got loads of pull even at 60 as you're going along you've got just so much pull on it it's untrue for a little 500 cc bike it's it's brilliant there we go and i think what we'll do actually we'll uh Call it to City Airport. 
we'll have a, we'll have a walk around it at City Airport. Let's just uh, have a quick look at it. So this is where we, uh, all your little planes are and your biplanes. Not many out today. And what we'll do, we'll do a, do a TMF on this. We're going to put in neutral, take our indicator off. Now the, indi uh, the ignition, there on the side. Stand, a bit fiddly, you can get to it, bottom of your heel. Uh, now, in terms of holding the bike and moving it, you haven't got many places, so you've got a strap on there. But there is no weight in this bike. Not the stand up, let's just take it around, let's do a TMF and see what it's like. So there we go. The turning circle on this, look at it, it's absolutely. Come on, stay inside, stay inside. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Slightly out. So, it's not a bad turning circle, is it? Really? From, uh, from, I didn't know whether my camera was on then. From, you know, the corner here, to where it is now, it's two bays. Well, one one bay really. Now this just for people to know as well. This is where the uh, if you look straight across there, Manchester Heliport. That's where the police helicopters are, and the air ambulance. That's where they come out of. And this is the airport itself. Now, I think what I'll do while I'm here. I think I'll get myself a little something to eat and now the steering lock let's see where the steering lock is on these because I think on the old bikes it used to be on the sides there we go so your steering locks here this is like the old bikes steering lock is on the opposite side of the uh, the ignition and that's just bringing you back the old days like a TS125 we had and little bikes like that many years ago. I do really like this swing arm. It is really, really, looks really, really well welded, well built. The adjustment on it on the back. You know, she's a really, really nice bike. And this is about five and a half grand, this bike, people. So what I'll do is we'll get the full stats on it and I'll go through it. I'll put them in there from, uh, from Honda's site. Nissan calipers, singles on the back, twin on the front. I say nothing wrong with them brakes at all. Cracking tyres on these, I don't know whether they all come with the same same ones, these are Dunlops. They seem to handle really well, but I'm in the dry. So what they're like in the wet, I don't know. Build quality on it, it's fabulous. I do love the, I actually like, it, it is a bit like the Triumphs, isn't it? The way that's been done. That exhaust on the back, but it does suit it. A bit different than the older one of this. I love the fact LED lights all the way round, a TFT dash on it, I like to say these are add-ons so they put this uh, like a little scrambler panel on the side of it isn't it? Absolute fabulous, I can't really say anything negative about it because for the price point of the bike and for what this bike will do and what you will do with it like me with my NC this will work for you this bike will just work for you you know if you're getting if you're brand new to biking and you're getting something you're going to have so much fun going down the lanes right let's knock you off there and I'll come back to you 
in a short while. Right, so we're, uh, we're just we're actually in the actual. This used to be where the pilots used to eat. It's been turned into a cafe now. So it used to be like a private club many many years ago. Really nice in here. So I'll tell you what the food's like. Nice little bar. Really nice little place. And we've got a little coffee just to keep me going. Right people, so we've stopped for our coffee and our sandwich. Not good for the heart, I know many of you will tell me. But look at that. That looks like a well slab sandwich. Now what? There we go people. And we've got the police helicopter coming back in. So there it is, departure lounge for the VG home of Manchester Mancunian chapter. Calf, really worth calling into. Well furnished, nice food. Right, tubers, as a, for some reason my audio went dead as it does on GoPros as usual. So we're going down Hollybush Lane. So the intention is now to run down Hollybush Lane and see how this CL500 copes with really rugged, uneven roads. And I'll be dead honest with you, I think this is better than my MC. It's better than my MC. It's a really, really good bike going over these uneven surfaces. Easily does it. It feels dead comfortable standing up on it, sitting down on it. It really does absorb the bumps. So... You'd have no problem. You fill this up and you go camping. You won't have any grief at all with it. So I decided now I'm going to go down Holly Bush Lane and show it you and show you know this is about the way I ride a bike and everywhere I go on my bikes. And you know an honest viewer, the sort of roads these bikes can deal with, because some bikes should go on these and the gravelly, slippy road would lift your heartbeat a bit. And now, for some reason, I also had a mad uh, turn of events, as you can see via the uh, the image. That this road, this is really, really bad. This road. So I've decided, right, I'm gonna help all YouTubers understand how bad this road is. So I'm gonna put myself at ground level. Now. Without even thinking about what would happen. Now we know I'm giving it away, aren't I? So there we go. So I'm showing you that road is it's not a good road. I mean the camera doesn't even give it away as how bad it is to be honest. I thought the camera would actually give it a, a, a bit of a giveaway. So we're carrying up the road and then what we'll do we'll we'll have a chat a chat about the walk around. So that's for all YouTubers, I actually get my belly to show you how bad this road is and how easy this CL500, this Honda CL500 will go over it easily without any grief at all. So I'm quite proud of myself doing that, I thought, you'll enjoy that. So we ride to the end of this road now. Showing the roughness of it. And it does it, like I say, really easy. So we'll get to the end of that road. And then we'll, we'll actually... Uh, we head to where I'm going to do a walk around on the bike. And I was dead surprised. This guy on this push bike, he's doing 29 miles an hour on that push bike. Uphill. So this guy is as fit as a butcher's dog. Absolutely, absolutely untrue the speed he was going at. Couldn't believe it. So we'll stop anyway, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a quick walk around on it. We'll pull up and we'll tell you the stats on the bike. So I pull the stats off MCN. You can pull them off many places. So let's just uh, flick them up. 
and I'll tell you the overrating of the reviews on it, summary of owners reviews on MCM is 4.7 out of 5 ride quality 4.4 out of 5 engine 4.9 out of 5 uh, reliabil reliability and build quality 5 out of 5 100% behind that uh, value versus ri rivals 4.7 out of 5 equipment 3.9 there's very little equipment on this bike you know this bike isn't uh it's a bike you get on it you ride it and you will get the best out of it so onto the specs on it it's got a 471 cc engine which is liquid cooled eight valve double double overhead cam on it a parallel twin it's a tubular diamond steel frame its fuel capacity is only 12 liters which isn't a lot but this bike is frugal people you know three gallons is gets you a long way uh ci is 790 millimeters its weight is only 192 kilograms front fork and suspension is 41 millimeter uh, millimeters conventional forks non-adjustable it's got a uh, twin rear shocks on the back of it which are absolutely brilliant uh, and they've got a five stage preload adjustment on them so you can adjust them uh, it's got a single 320, uh, 310 mil floating uh, front brake disc with two pistons. It's got 240 millimeter single disc on the back. Uh, the front tire is 110 by 80 by 19. The rear tire is 150 by 70 by 17. Miles per gallon, 78.5, and I can tell you now, mine was shown. I think it was 109, and you'll see at the end. The amount I put in that bike for 108 miles, I was astounded. Annual wheel tax on it is £84 a year. The average servicing cost, they're saying, is £280. I think it'll be a bit less than that, to be quite honest. Uh, MCM price for it is £5999. Uh, and I think there's the on road, and that's where it comes to £6149. Use price from 4500 to uh, 5500 uh, the maximum power on it is a 46 brake horsepower. Uh, the maximum torque on it is 30, 32 foot pounds. No top speed on it. Uh, and it arrived in 2023. Now, being dead honest with you on this bike, it's rivals compared to the likes of uh, probably the, the Scrambler 400 or the 400, the uh, Triumph 400 and the Himalayan and them sort. I owned a Himalayan and, you know, sad to say, this is a better bike. You know, if I was going to put my money back into either Hemi or this, I'd put it back into this. It's just a fabulous bike. So, what we'll do now is we'll go back over, because the side here haven't told you there. I'm searching for my phone to actually take photographs of the bike, which I always do when I pull up there, and I haven't got it. So, you lose your phone... It's not the phone that, that is the worry, it's everything that's on the thing. And the thing about these bikes is, you can get this on a PCP for about £199 down and £89 a month, which is cheaper than most mobile phones. I had lost my mobile phone when I'd done the walk around. I was cacking myself, I was having a second heart attack. Because what happens when you've lost your phone? You've lost your number. I don't think you can remap your number if you lose your, lose your SIM. You know, comment if I'm, if I'm right or wrong, but I think if you lose your SIM in your phone, you, you won't... I'm on the phone! You won't, you, won't, uh, you won't actually get that number back. So luckily, I thought to myself at first, have I dropped this? Have I left it at, at uh, the calf? And I couldn't believe it. I thought I'll have to go back to the calf and I'll uh, check there. Luckily, I had the second brainwave and I looked and I thought, I've laid down on a road and maybe I've dropped it. Now, this was the best day I've had in ages. <laughs> I thought it was going to turn out a terrible day. 
I thought, oh my god. And th this is where the uh, the GoPro doesn't even really show it well. Now, if you look down there, this is the biggest saviour of my day. I'm thinking, I hope I can find my phone. So this is what I'm looking for now. I'm going back over the tracks I had, looking for my mobile phone, praying that it's here, because I thought, if it's in the calf, it's gone. There's no ifs or buts about it, it's gone. Uh, and as you can see in the GoPro, the GoPro, it's not that brilliant when you look down. And this is where it doesn't really show you everything the way your eyes see it, to be honest. Any minute now, I was so, so relieved. So, like a massive lemon, I will never, ever do that again for you. I will never lie down and look at a road with my phone in my pocket. Because how lucky am I? My phone is there. So, we now head off and we'll head off into... Uh, into Wellington. Yeah, so we've just done a little uh, errand for bills into into Wellington Sound Centre, and and this is where this bike belongs. You can see a towny B roads, absolutely beautiful. So what we'll do now, we'll just give a a quick ride out of Wellington, around the town itself, and. Uh, See what she's like in the town to ride because so far on my ride on this it's been absolutely fabulous an absolute brilliant ride and i say for turning around you've seen us turn it around dead light spin it around Really good turn circle on it. Easy to get onto. And the rain is it. Buttery smooth engine. Stand. <laughs> Stand seems to be sticking a little bit on that when you put it back up. Little one two five. So let's head towards uh, Banky Station. Even bus drivers now driving the buses like the uh, race cars. Gone mad. I used to drive for these many years ago. Going to buses and the river, or gold lines as it was in the day. This is the Golden Gates. This is the council buildings. Gates were built for the uh, Queen. I think it was Victoria. She didn't. They were either too small or they didn't like them. So they ended up staying in Warrington. Steeped in history, uh, Wellington. It's like the River Mercy many years ago, people don't realise it, it had salmon running up it. And I believe that the back in, there was... Uh, there's been re-sightings of them. So let's go down towards Banky Station now, and then this is Wellington Town Centre on the CL500. What a bike. That's your Banky station. There's two stations in Wellington, the Central and Banky. And an absolute easy bike to ride around the town centres. We'll go straight up. That's a new road that they've put in now. That goes to Runcorn. So we're going to uh, go the old way. 
these used to be all these houses used to be the solicitors that were down in Wellington and the central square changed as you go round to the right which the Smiths used to be there to the left time square that's all gone this used to be Mr Smith's that car park it's uh, got slightly burnt down the Guardian buildings so if you're a lefty you'll like them if you're righty you won't like them and that statue there people is all over Cromwell you want to know who it is who actually uh, held up in Warrington and uh, attacked people holding up in the Winger Bells Church where you can see straight ahead there you can see the steeple to it that was the Winger Bells and there's a little Indian restaurant which is a black and white building before Sainsbury's and that's where Olive Cromwell held up in his days before his head rolled uh, and without that man you know you wouldn't have had education in Britain you wouldn't have had the House of Commons, which is probably done as a world of badness now. But, you know, thinking about it, none of them are any good, are they? They've all got blue sky thinking, but no common sense. So we're going to head down it to... Uh, I think we'll go through Stocks and Heath. Stockton Heath used to be, uh, well, still is a very prosperous side of Warrington as you go further up into Appleton, Thorn, and the wealthier side. Some lovely roads, you see me ride down them many a times. And as I say, this bike on these roads, it's just fabulous. You know, nipping around towns like this, it's just absolutely perfect for it. And as we go over the uh, the bridge here, when I first moved into Warrington, I drove for Warrington Borough Council, and that's where the old bus depot used to be. Gone now, it's been moved. It's moved into uh, Orford, I believe. So we'll go down the causeway now, into Stockton Heath. Filtering and traffic, got non, no problems at all with this. It's as light as a 125, it's just, it is amazing. Thanks David for letting me ride this, I really do appreciate this. It is really, really, I wouldn't be ashamed to, you know, I say it all the time, and this is the thing, there's so many bikes now, even I get on and I think, would I be better off with that? Or would, you know, because like for me, I'm not interested in speed anymore. I'm interested in getting somewhere comfortable, relaxed, and saving myself a few quid getting there. I love the big bikes, I love the ones with all the gadgets on. But they in themselves bring their own issues, don't they? It's like it just it just flips. You flick it through the traffic so easy. And these roads are tight, people. They're not narrow. They are narrow, sorry. So we're going over the uh, River Mersey now. Uh, the Manchester Ship Canal, so we're not over Mersey. And if you ever want to come out for a drink and a meal, lovely little places here. It is a really, really nice little place to come to. Always does well, clean as you can see. People are nice here. 
you know, it's probably one of the smiliest places in uh, in Wellington, to be honest. I'll tell you what, we've seen a lot of police today, haven't we? Fire engine. That's not good. Honestly, people, I can't say enough about this bike. You get on things, I mean, my first impression when I got on this bike, I thought, when I said to David, I said, if you look in my channel, I had an old CBF 500, which my nephew learned to ride on. Uh, I let him ride that until he passed his test. And I thought, this will be very much the same as that. This is a nicer bike. Without a doubt. Smoother. It feels better in the bends. It feels nice and light. I mean, that one felt fantastic, but... And could you tour on it? I think you could tour on this easily without any issue at all. I think you could munch miles with ease on it. As I say, I've got it. it the handlebars, dead comfy. You wanted to put bar risers on and bring them back a bit further, you could do that. I don't even think they need them. I said again, these rubber... rubber pieces on the side of the tank, fabulous. Grip your, you know, your knees are gripping to them. And saves your tank being scratched as well. Just then now you can just get on this bike and ride it for miles. Just fabulous. Golf course, Wellington. And they used to call this loaded row, they used to call this. People with the money. Good luck to them. You know, I say to, uh, you've heard it on my channel many times before. I've got no... Nothing against people who do well. As long as you do it honestly. You know, people that do it honestly are worth the salt for me. You know, and I say it over and over again, you wait what these governments are going to do, we're going to, we're going to tax the rich, take a bit more off them. The rich pay a lot more in tax. And you get this fallacy that people who earn a lot more money, 100,000, don't pay more tax. They do pay more tax. The majority of people that put a lot into the park are people earning over 60, 80, 100,000 pounds. You know, pay more in tax than I do. The ones that get on away with it are your billionaires. And there's no way in a million years that any government will get at them billionaires. They're just too smart. But as my old fella used to say, you can't take it with you. And that's what happens when you look at all of your gates and all these people who have had millions that become philanthropists because they feel guilty with what they've done. But, you know what I mean, he's employed a lot of people. He is. What Gates has done, what all these big companies, even the ones that you don't like, the Facebooks and the Meta or whatever they're called now, they have employed, you know, so many people it's beyond belief, you know, and that's what's happening, life is just changing. You 
either get angry and try and fight it or you roll with it. And I'd rather roll with it on something like this. Brakes again, fabulous. Now, this is where we're heading now, people. We've got to go down the lanes. I think this bike is built for. And this is where this bike, it's weird when you get on a bike like this because you feel faster. When you get on these little uh, B roads like this, your bike feels faster. See now. We certainly don't want to be behind this all the way. There we go. So it's got plenty enough to get you out. In actual fact, I shouldn't have bothered. I should have gone down Stocks Lane there, Stocks Lane. I'd have done this a, a world of work. We'll go down one of the other ones. I'm sure we'll find a nice little road to go down. But this is where I would ride this bike. You know, even going to Blackpool Honda or somewhere like that. You just pick up these roads, you pick up these little nice roads. This is where you have the best fun on it. And it just, it's like I say, it just swallows these up for fun. And the farmers are out spreading their uh, luscious uh, stuff and which way should we go now fog lane or or stockley lane now i'll go i think we'll do fox lane never been down here never been down here people or have we it may be uh yeah it's stock stocks lane off stocks lane and it goes on to here right know where we are this is a fabulous little lane Standing up on it, we go easy. Now, tell us what you think is equivalent to it outside the Honda range. Put me on your views. Have you got anything that you've got equivalent that you would say is as good or you think is better? Because I think this will take some beating. Antrobuffs will go that way, eh? Maybe worth putting a little set of them on. As you can see these lanes here, wow. And that, like I say over and over again, the other reason why I do this, I'm nose I love seeing, it's like, you know, little houses like these. If you don't do this, you'll never see it. It's fabulous to see it. How Britain has been built and where they built things. This, like, I'm lost now. No, so much people, I'm lost. I, I have no idea where we are. I know towards Antrobus. But you can see these are proper, like, the old farm tracks, aren't they, really, that haven't been tarmacked over. The proper old English roads, before motorways, before A roads, 
these are what they were, these are what you used to drive on. Imagine the Roman carts going up them. Lodge Lane, where's that going? Let's go there. Got to go to a lodge, haven't it? So if you've been down this way before, leave your comments, because I honestly haven't a clue. I probably do when I, I turn up to a certain part, I'll recognise where we are. But I don't ever recognise going down these roads. But now I have. Wow. And this is the thing as well. You know, if you're loaded, if you've got loads of money and you're looking for a new house and you're a biker and you get out and do this, you may be riding down a lane that you see your future house. And that's the other reason for it. It's therapy people. And it's the best therapy in the world for me. You know, I'm, I'm astounded how many roads there are. I've lived in Warrington 30 plus years in Cheshire and I've never been down them. I've definitely never been down there. So, and I, I think I'd struggle to find it again. Look at it, it's just bloody amazing people. Owen Hiley. So where is this road taking us? We know Highley Garden Centre. Well, people, I'm back in Manchester now. Uh, my lovely tubers, and I'll be sad to get off it because I've thoroughly enjoyed every minute I've had on this bike. And we've had uh, parts where I've not, not filmed where it's been heavy rain, it's gone through it easy. It's just an absolute lovely, lovely bike to ride. Again, just bikes, just bikes in general now are just getting better and better and better. It's, get, it's getting harder to actually say one bike is better than another one. You know, and that's the truth of it. Because if you have a bike that rides like this, and you know, you know what I mean? It, like I say, this is not a sports bike. It's like my NC. You can go fast on it. But it's not built for that. It's built for this. It's built for the B roads. It's built for the back lanes, like we've done around Antrobus and Northwich and all around there today. That's what this loves. For 108 miles, I've done roughly on it. Six pounds 32. That's how good that bike is. Hi, mate. Right, let's just uh For the fun I've had on this bike for that time, that is absolutely peanuts. And again, thank you, Honda Yules of Manchester, for letting me ride the bike. Thank you, David, for that. Really do appreciate it. And as I say to all of you, ride safe, be kind to others, and with luck, they will be kind to you. Let's get the UK back on track, people, eh? See you in the next one. Ta-ra!